Hey everybody, it's Kev. Still here, not going anywhere. Still a hat nerd for life. I'm here uh, not exactly knowing what I'm gonna talk about today, but I do know this. Um, I feel like talking, and I feel like talking to you guys today. Um, firstly, the comments, everybody, it's wild. Uh, first of all, I never knew I was, I was so loved and I had so many friends. It's a pretty, it's a pretty crazy thing to, um, to see that, you know, all laid out on paper like that. Like endless, endless comments. You know, we love you, we're staying with you, blah, blah, blah. So, you know what? Right up to you, okay? Thank you, guys. Um, today, I think we're going to talk about some basics. I want to talk about some basic stuff. The hat stuff that a lot of you guys know. A lot of you guys are new viewers. Um, I've been reading that, you know, there's a few of you guys that have only been tuning in for two weeks, or some guys have two years, other guys, you know, a long, long time. Seven years, ten years, whatever. Um, there are definitely people there that are not hat experts. They don't know what a, a reed is or a wind cord or all these hat nerdy things that, you know, we all know about. Um, so what I want to do is I want to break it down. Let's say, let's say you're a new employee working at a hat shop, okay? And you knew pretty much nothing. Okay? If you knew absolutely nothing, let's say you're a really good salesman, you're here at a hat shop, but you know nothing at all about hats. All you know is you, you heard a Stetson. That's it. Okay? I want to break it down, everything, all the basics for you, so you know all the basics just like a hat salesman does. Like me, like Ida, uh, Charlton, Jose, uh, Townsend, David like Van, like LG, like Claire, uh, everybody at the shop. Um, we know hats, you might not. So here's the thing. You come in, you know nothing. What am I gonna teach you? All right, there's the basics. Let's start at the very, very, very beginning, okay? You've got two categories. You've got summer hats and felt hats, okay? Two different seasons. You guys know all this, bear with me, okay? It's gonna get more interesting. Two different categories. You've got hats for felt. They're made out of either wool felt, wool from a lamb, or they're made out of fur felt, which is generally the hair from a rabbit. It's almost always hair from a rabbit. Sometimes they talk about hair from a beaver or a mink. It's pretty rare. Not that many people use beaver. And it's, uh, is it much better than rabbit? Not really, but uh, it used to be years ago. There are very, very few people building quality beaver hats like the old days. Uh, there are some amazing, amazing hats out there but not a lot of them are beaver, okay? A lot of them are rabbit. Even the ones that are furry that we call beaver, you know, like I wanna get myself a beaver hat, long hair, like the old Superfly beaver hats and stuff. They're rabbit too, and they've always been rabbit. So, let's talk about the two categories. Basically, in New York, the summer season is, I don't know, we will say uh, three, four months, four months, let's say. The fall and winter season is going to be more like eight months. So this is a stronger season. People tend to like felt hats more than straw hats. They tend to look better. It's more colors. They just look cooler. You know, most people like this over this, you know. We wear this because we have to, because it's the summer and this is too hot, okay? so. You're gonna wear these to keep cool. It's gonna shade you and it's gonna be very, very porous. More breathable and porous than a piece of cotton. That's 
the way this stuff is. It will be very, very lightweight, keep you shaded, and um, that's its purpose. These guys have a, uh, a water repellency to them. Fur felt is going to last you longer. It's going to be more expensive. You'll pay uh, $150, $200 on average for a fur felt hat and up. Let's say $250, $200 to $300. Maybe it'll start at around $185. Maybe, that's even going cheap these days. You know, after post-pandemic crisis, things have gone up a little bit. Fur felt hats made out of rabbit and stuff are gonna last you a little longer. It's not because they're waterproof. Um, it's, it's basically because yeah, they don't shrink as much, okay? You can have a hat made out of rabbit fur, that's your dad's hat from the 50s, and it can still look fresh today. This hat is probably my most worn hat I've ever had. I rolled it up into little cones literally hundreds and hundreds of times in front of people and on camera. And it still looks brand new because it's for felt and it's good quality. Today I'm probably gonna have a, one of my assistants is gonna help me a little bit. And we're, we're gonna talk about a few things too. Uh, my assistant LT is gonna uh, you know, help me with a few things. And um, I'm gonna have him on camera in a couple of minutes. There are two different weights of felt. There's what they call dress felt for fedoras. It's soft and it's meant to be lightweight and comfortable. And there's Western felt. Western felt, uh, LT, can you hear me that blue hat over there? Thank you. Um, Western felt is meant to be stiff. It's meant to be rugged. Okay, I'm slapping this so you can get an idea of the tactile, the weight, the stiffness of the hat. Um, People used to always joke me about slapping hats. That's why I do it, so you can see how stiff it is and stuff. Western hats are much, much thicker, okay? They're gonna last you very, very well, and they're gonna do well in the rain. Felt hats like this are not meant to get wet, okay? Uh, these hats, although they're weatherproof, they're not meant to be rain hats. So if you're asking which hat should you wear in the rain, probably the best stuff are gonna be real cowboy hats, things that are made out of real western felt. Not an open road, not a dune, not a crossover hat like a Stratoline, or an actual western felt which is thick. If you want a hat to be, let's say, flat, dead flat, it's got to be stiff and it's got to be thick like this, otherwise it's just going to droop from its weight. As soon as water gets on it, it'll do this. So something like this is the only way you can get a hat to be completely flat. It has to be western felt. So you've got the two categories, summer and winter hats. Now you've got the two types of felt, okay? Western felt and dress felt. Soft and light, hard and rugged. They're two completely different types of felt, okay? And just because something is uh, advertised as rugged looking or cowboyish, it doesn't mean that it's a cowboy or Western felt. Caps. What about caps? You know about baseball caps? Everybody thinks about their Yankee caps and their fitted caps, new era caps. I used to sell new era caps for nine years on Steinway Street in Queens. I know what they are. They're amazing. I love baseball caps, but today we're talking about something else, dress caps. Dress caps, there are two different categories. Does anybody know what the two basic types of caps are? How about Dave over there in the second row, Mr. Scott? That's right, newsboys and flat caps, also known as ivy caps in the industry. Let's take a look at a newsboy. Uh, my assistant, uh, hey LT, can you bring me a newsboy? Here you go, Mr. Kevin. Oh, thanks LT. This is what we call a basic newsboy cap. This is actually a slight modification on a classic newsboy cap but we'll get to that later. Um, a newsboy cap has panels. You see all these panels? Almost like a pie slice. Okay, there are two, two, two different types of caps. One of them is gonna have the button and the panels. There are eight panels, by the way. That's correct. This is called an eight panel cap. There's also a six panel cap, which is very rare. They are narrower. So think of an eight panel cap as the wider 
the baggier of the two types of caps. Okay, it's also known as a newsboy cap, it's known as an apple, an applejack, it's known as a lot of things, Gatsby's, I could name 10 other things, uh, Baker Boys. The newsboy is a baggy cap. That's for somebody who wants that old, you know, peaky blinders, a little bit of bagginess on the sides. You see where it's flopping over on the sides like that? All right, that's what makes this hat cool. It's what gives it its beauty. What do you think? Do you like a baggy cap or do you think of, you'd like a skinnier cap? Is this look too baggy on me? Uh, it looks okay, but maybe about, a skinny cap would be a little bit better. How about like this? Yeah, it's better. It's better, right? Okay. Yeah, it's better. Now this is what we call a Spitfire. A Spitfire is a modification on a newsboy cap. It does have eight panels, uh, like LT said, but the difference is a newsboy is snapped down here or sewn down. It can only be worn like that. When a Spitfire, also known as a three-way cap, can be worn three ways. Let's show you how. It could be worn as a newsboy, number one. It could be worn at, to the side, it's a jaunty newsboy, and it could be worn back as a Spitfire. It's a three different ways. It's a three-way cap, that's why they call it. This is actually the Marlin Brando cap. This is something, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty rare cap. Actually, I can't uh, tell you guys where to find these. These are discontinued, but it's a Spitfire and it's a type of a newsboy cap. Okay, I don't actually have a flat cap, an ivy cap here to show you, but I'm gonna show you some in uh, some pictures and we'll flash them some photos in a, of an ivy cap. An ivy cap is for the guy who doesn't like all this bagginess. Let's say you like the bagginess, but I don't like it. I want my cap to be very slim and skinny on the sides, okay? I'm gonna tell you right now, most people like a skinny cap. Other people like a baggy newsboy. They're a little bit more uh, daring with their caps. Most people don't want this flop on the side. They want it very skinny and neat, kind of like a, uh, like a Kangol cap. I'm sure you've heard of Kangol. Kangol is the most popular flat cap. Thank you very much for bringing me this, LT. You're welcome. Let's talk about what type of fedoras there are. There are some basic shapes. There are two very common basic shapes. We're gonna talk about it now. Uh, can you bring me uh, maybe a center crease? Yes, here you go. This is a center crease right here. Okay, obviously, uh, call it a center crease because there's a center crease right in here and by the way I use this in one of my Frankie's World videos so let's pause for a little bit please subscribe to my channel Frankie's World NYC it would really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel too give us a I'd really appreciate that absolutely it's awesome it's an awesome comedy channel that I'm also involved with yeah you've seen some of the videos I do on your channel like one guy commented about the Frank Barringer videos during the uh, COVID, you know who you are. Yeah, we kept you sane during COVID with our comedy videos. So if you enjoyed them, please subscribe to Frankie's World NYC. Thanks, LT. Um, the center crease is the most common type of fedora. It's basically a crease, okay, and generally has two pinches in the front. Okay, what we really call this is a center crease pinch front. Okay, uh, center crease pinch front is going to be the most basic, most common type of fedora or dress hat. Okay. What's the second most common? Uh, why don't you bring me a teardrop? Okay. Okay. There you go. The Back. teardrop is obviously called a teardrop for a reason. Look at that shape. It's like a triangular shape. Yeah, it's like a, a teardrop coming out of your eye, like, like crying drops yeah. of rain. You see it? Okay, teardrop is a, basically the second type of fedora shape. It's very common. Teardrops are going to look more nostalgic, like a 1940s gangster Humphrey Bogart era type of a hat. It's going to give you a more nostalgic, kind of a film noir, old-timey look. You can see already, it looks like a black and white movie or something. Okay, one thing about a teardrop that's amazing, it looks low. It's a lower hat than a center crease, generally, because what we're doing is we're lowering a whole bunch of the top and making that 
what we're doing is we're making that slant by lowering it. Okay, but ironically, although it's the lowest looking shape, it's the deepest shape. So if you're a very tall man and the top of your head isn't over here, let's say it's up here, you're gonna need a lot more depth. So if you've got a center crease going on, you're gonna bump into that little crease. Center crease goes like this, and in the inside, there's a big bump. Show them the bump inside your hat so they can see. You see, look there's in, a big... Yeah, look at the inside. You see that? Right here. Okay, if you're a tall guy, you're going to hit that bump. What happens, it sits up on the top of your head like this instead of down here, okay? And taller guys cannot wear a center crease. What happens is it either fits them wrong like this, or they pop out the top because their head is just too deep, okay? What those guys have to wear is a teardrop. A teardrop is deeper. The reason it's deep is because this part does not jut down into the crown like a center crease. It comes up, just like this, watch. Hey, let me show you my green hat, okay? I'm gonna teardrop it now. Okay, so there's a bubble right in the middle. This little bubble can go up high as you need. If you're six feet, if you're seven feet, if you're eight feet or nine feet, this little bubble can go as high as it needs to be. Just like that, inside. And your hatter, a guy like me, can shape this bubble to be just as high as your head, but no higher, so that nobody sees that bubble. It's buried way down the side there. So, teardrop is gonna be more square looking, more nostalgic, like an old movie. It's gonna give you more depth, and it's going to be deeper, okay? Although the teardrop is a very square shape, it doesn't have the grace, the softness, and the beauty, in my opinion, of a center crease. Center creases are graceful, the lines are sculpted and soft, and they look great on everybody. You can see it. It's the first time he's worn this particular hat, and it looks like he, he belongs in it. You know what that hat reminds me of? What does it remind you? The Jackson 5 hats, the pink hat from the Jackson 5 tour. I was going to say the same thing. All right, let's talk about something else. You know the one thing that's different about this hat from Michael Jackson's Jackson 5 pink hat? His hat had a flat top, okay? Yeah. You know what the flat top fedoras are called? It's called a telescopic crown. You knew that, but some of these guys didn't know. Can you bring me a telescopic crown? I've got a really sure. nice telescope here. Right here, it's like a circle crease around the hat. Mm -hmm. This one doesn't really have a bubble like a teardrop, it has, looks more flat, basically, but there is a very, very subtle bubble. This particular one is a little stretched out here because, uh, you know, reasons, just got stretched, but the idea is that you have just a little bit of a curve there, if you're tall, but the hat looks as low as possible. It's touching your head, so it cannot go any lower than that. Basically, this is the lowest shape you can have. I mean, honestly, well, if you're, Wearing it like this, you can't really see this thing. I, I don't particularly That's like also that. True. My favorite time is like the center, center crease. Yeah, the center crease. It looks perfect on me. Center crease looks really good on you, I think. Yeah. And the color looks good too with your hair. It looks amazing. Um, let's see what else we can show these nice people. Um, why don't we show them some interesting textures? Why don't you bring me that last hat over there that you were going to show me? This one, yeah. Yeah, that one. Yeah, the one right. that you liked? Okay. So, Show them the texture of this hat. Let me see if we could bring up the light a little bit so you can see the actual texture. It's very texture. dark, so... Yeah, bring it really. nice and close. Let's see if we can focus on that texture a little bit. Well, it's not really... It might be a bit dark. Okay. The texture of this hat has a very subtle fur to it. It's furry, but silky. Um, you yeah, know, the lighting might not be great to see the actual texture, but... This is what's known as a silk finish, a beaver finish, a peluche, peluche. This is a hat that has a little bit of a, a furriness to it. And uh, it's very subtle. It's not big and fluffy. It doesn't look that pimped out. But what it does have is a very elegant, shiny, soft, soft feel to it. This is a three inch brim, which is a very big brim. Brims we were showing you before were all about two and three eighths inch. That's my preferred, everybody knows I wear this hat all the time. This is my Borsalino that I've had for, I don't know, 15 years, 10 years or more. This one, uh, you can see I like colors. 
Great. I'm a color guy. I really, really like a lot of different colors and stuff. But um, what I wanted to talk to you about is um, not only brim lengths, but, uh, okay, you see these are two and three eighths inch brim. What I wanted to talk to you about is um, not only brim lengths, but, uh, okay, you see these are two and three eighths inch brim. This is a much bigger brim. This is a three inch brim, okay? This might be a little bit too wide for this fellow because of his height, because of his stature. I'm a little bit shorter than Kev. Mm -hmm. I personally feel it might even be a little bit big for me. When I had my long hair, I thought this would look great. But now that I've got my short hair, this balance is better. And even a two inch brim, a shorter brim because of now the way I look. But for you, you're a little smaller than me. A three inch brim would overpower you. Yes. Okay? So. Brim length is very important. Three inches considered pretty much the biggest for a fedora. Two and a half, two and three eighths, two and a half inch is very classical. It's a classic brim size. My hat, LT's hat, you can have your hat back. All right, thank you. You're welcome. These are two and a half inch brims. We both prefer yeah. two and a half. That's what his, you know, that's his hat, this is my hat. We both like about two and three eighths inch brims. Um, that's his style. Three inch brims is where I used to wear when I had longer hair because it balanced out more. I had all this fluffy kind of hair like that guy from Guns N' Roses, Slash. So it balanced well, the big giant brim. The idea when you're choosing brims is to pick a brim that balances well and puts out the image that you want to put out. If you want a more conservative image and you want to be a gentleman and more understated, you could wear a shorter brim like a two inch brim. Uh, let's look at a two inch brim now. How about, uh, how about this one? Yeah. All right, this is a two inch brim. It's probably not a really cool hat for you because you'd look better in a nice color, but a two inch brim is a gentleman's hat. This is what Sinatra wore. This is what all the, you know, the 50 and 60 year old men, you know, in the 60s wore, and, you know, it's a gentleman's hat. Personally, I like the colors one more, but if you want to be more of a classy gentleman, then I think this, that hat would be, a little more suitable for you. Well said, I agree. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a classic guy when it comes to hats, but I'm a funky guy. I like colors. I like a classic hat. Yeah. You, we both like colors. We like funky colors. We're kind of quirky guys, and you know, we're both artists, musicians, and we like that stuff. But um, most people are going to choose more colors that are more versatile, that will match lots of your things. A color like beige, like this light brown, and a color like gray. Those two colors will match anything in your entire wardrobe. If you have those two, gray hat will match your blacks, your blues, your grays, uh, your trench coats. Your earth tones will go with this. You can wear this with anything brown, green. You could wear it with uh, black, with navy. Those two colors will Pretty much. Those are great. Black hats, they're not as versatile as a gray hat. If you're wearing black suits, charcoal suits and stuff, why not wear a light gray hat? Why be a guy all in black? You know, it's too serious. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's too mm -hmm. serious. Um, you want to see how you look in this one or not? I don't think it's your style. Let's see. Let's see. It's a two no, inch brown. No. Let me try it. I don't, I don't think that's going to look good. Nah, that's not you. Yeah. It looks like some old vintage hat. You look way better in your uh, hat. Anyway, here's your hat. All right, we're going to take a little break. Let's get back to hat chatting. Um, what's your favorite hat of mine? Yeah, I mean, of all the stuff that I have, my yellow one, um, uh, my blue one, um, all, all of the hats that I wear, which one do you like? I got to be honest, I really like the classic green Borsalino on you. I'm a Borsalino guy. Yeah, it looks really classic. You always love to wear green stuff. You even have a green guitar back there. Green is my color. I, I always, uh, yeah, I kind of associate with green for some reason. I've always associated this channel a little bit with green. Um, let's talk a little bit about these hats here. This is a, uh, a Stetson Temple. This was the uh, basically the, the model for the Indiana Jones hats. So, um, Excuse the lighting, it's a little poor today. We're actually doing this uh, you know, very, very late at night and stuff. It's currently 18 at night, so... Um. Yeah, so bear with us as far as the lighting. We're, we're trying the best. We've got them cranked. This is 
the quinsequential Indiana Jones hat. This is it. This is called the Stetson Temple model. It's been out for years and years before I was born. I was born in 66, and this was out long before I was born. This hat is a little different from all my other hats. You know why it's a little different? Why? Well, this hat is, it's a fedora. Just like, you know, you could wear it this way, and you could wear it this way, just like we've been doing. But this one is known as the Indiana Jones because it, it's that movie that, you know, they made with Indiana Jones wearing it and stuff. But he wore his hat a little different. What he did is he turned the back down too. And it gave him this kind of safari look, like he's going through the jungle, kind of like a rough guy. And it started a whole trend, like, I don't know, it was maybe back in the 70s and the 80s, when this movie came out. And a lot of people started wearing hats to look sort of rugged, like they were a rugged man going through the safari and the yeah. jungle and stuff like that. Right. And that was, it started a huge, huge trend. After that, people started wearing um, Australian hats and getting more into the, you know, the really rugged look. Um, it's not a good look for me. I'm a little bit more of an artist and I like more flashy things. Um, what about you? Do you think this is your style? No, not really. I like You're not a brown guy. Hats like you yeah, I know you love that one. One and... Okay, what do you think about this one? Now, this is a hat I've had for a long time. It started out with an open crown, like a bowl. It was um, completely open like this. And what I did is I shaped it flat like a telescope, and I kind of feel like I screwed it up. Yeah, I... <laughs> <laughs> I used to really love it, and then when I made it flat, I started hating it. I want to ask you, what do you think about it? You want to see me in it? Uh, I don't particularly like this brim over here. Oh, the, the, yeah. Uh, the telescope. You know uh, what it is? Sometimes when you work at a hat shop, when it's slow, you start experimenting on your own hat. It looks too straight. Too yeah. Straight. yeah. It doesn't look right. And I think I kind of ruined this hat. So I always tell people, if you feel like just experimenting with your hats and you just feel like steaming for the sake of steaming, Buy yourself an old cheap hat, you know, at the flea market or the that. church sale. Yeah, no. play around with that. Don't mess up your favorite hat because if you start... You're going to regret it. You, exactly. You know how many hats I regretted changing? I've changed it 50, 60 times and then I just wish it was brand new. So now no. I don't mess with my hats. Look I leave them stuck. Now. That's yeah. right. I've never uh, steamed and reshaped this hat. You know, all the hats that I have now, I leave them alone. Um, there is something about leaving your stuff alone. Like my guitars, I try not to put stickers on them. What? I don't like to mess with them. I like it clean. That's just me. To, I like my hats clean. To our OG fans, remember that, uh, what's the color? Like the a light green guitar that was, had a Pink Panther logo on it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, That's right. My silver guitar, too. You like that one? Yeah. Which is your favorite guitar of mine? got rid of a lot of them. I like that silver one, but my favorite now? one now oh, is this good one. Good choice. The Firebird, Firebird from 1976. 1976. Bicentennial model. I had to give up three guitars to get this one, guys. That's... Cost me... It's uh, as old as you. It's almost. It's 76. I'm 66. Well, nothing, nothing is as old as me. Well, <laughs> I'm older yeah. than everything, well, but it's almost. It came out when you were, like... At 10. 10. You were, when you were 10, it came out. In the Bicentennial. Does anybody remember the Bicentennial? 1976? I remember it. I remember it well. It was the one year I went to summer camp. My parents sent me away to summer camp, and I hated it. It was a horrible place, and I broke my arm that year. <laughs> it was absolutely miserable. But there was really great radio uh, on that summer. I remember Turning the Beat Around by Vicky Sue Robinson was the song that everybody was dancing to that summer and uh it was just a it was a cool year but it was a weird year i so you like that firebird huh? yes yeah, good taste i man. don't particularly i'm not into that kind of music i'm a madonna fan myself i love madonna so uh we've got tickets for madonna huh yeah two different dates sucks that it got postponed madonna's gonna feel better yeah, she had a hospital scare, it got postponed, that's okay. She had a serious bacteria infection. Yeah, she's okay. And Donna's going to be in concert two nights, we're going to see them both nights. Yeah! <laughs> um, <laughs> I would, 
you guys want to come with us? It's in Madison Square Garden. Uh, and when is it? The, the, the new date? January? Um, January. What? We're getting off track now. Yeah, we're getting off track. We're, we're taking a tangent. Let's go back to hat chatting. Different ways you can wear hats. You can wear your brim up. You can wear it at a slant. You can wear it down at a slant. You could wear it more. Moving up, do a little bit. You could bit. do all sorts of stuff with it. You could it get looks creative. Cool when it's a little bit. And it's not too straight. Uh huh. Exactly. Like, like a cool angle. I like. I like a, a little angle like that. It looks a little jazzy. You can do it on the back. That was how they wore it in the '80s. Like uh, Boy George and Madonna wore their hats like that in the '80s. Culture Club. You know, like '80s style. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Aha and all that stuff. Yeah. I love Aha. That's the best song. You ever listen to the drums on that yes. Aha song? It's amazing. No. Um, that's it. We're going to wrap it up. We can't talk about everything, but I thought I wanted to start doing some hat chats, hat chats with my assistant. He knows a lot about hats, and he's an awesome assistant. He's just uh, he's, he's made these videos come alive for me. And um, guys, thank you for everything, for all your amazing comments. Thank you for all your support. And Did you feel the love? For really? Yes. Did you read any of those comments? Yes, they were very touching, and we really appreciate all your support. and. Hopefully you end up in another hat shop and you'll be Kevin from Hat Shop. Um, we'll see where the road brings me. Maybe I'll wind yeah. up uh, working here, working for a hat shop or a hat company. Maybe, who knows? You never know. But uh, hey, we got a little time off to be together, right? Yes. I love you. I love you guys too. Peace. <laughs>